Hi, I am Monique Burns with Secrets of Section 8 Revealed. And today I am going to tell you about my number one most important top tip in doing a background check on somebody that has Section 8 or honestly on any tenant ever at all. And it's paying them a little home visit. Do you feel kind of awkward? Like, how on earth am I going to do that? You shouldn't. I'll tell you exactly how I do it. So let's get started. Monique Burns with Great Day Property Management. My properties are all in Detroit. I started, my husband and I started in 2007 buying houses in Detroit and our first Section 8 tenant moved in in 2008. She is still there. She's wonderful. And my second tenant moved in in 2008 as well. She just left in 2019. I've had great experiences with people with Section 8. My Section 8 tenants seem to stay a while. Check out my video. Here's the thumbnail of pros and cons of Section 8. I really do think that they stay longer, but you got to know what you're doing. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. Another thing my husband and I do is we buy houses ourselves we renovate them we place a tenant I do I do the whole background check I place a tenant in the house we get it all set so that it's gonna pass a section 8 and city inspection and then we sell these houses to investors all over the country and all over the world and we help them out with their property management so be sure you check out my um, if you go on my website there is a for sale page and you can look at that and see what I might currently have so in this video I'm going to talk to you about the dreaded home Home visit. I get it all set up in the initial phone call. That initial phone call I take from any tenant and I have a spe I have special things that I ask people that have Section 8. Here's how I do the initial phone call. So watch for that video. Be sure you subscribe because I haven't made all these videos yet, but they're coming. So subscribe so you're sure to get all these videos. And if you find value in my videos, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. So I tell the tenant in the initial phone call, hey, by the way, one of the things I do with the background check is we do come and see how you live because, and this is what I say, because how you live now is how you're gonna treat my house. And I'm not mean the way I say it, it's just in my personality. But by this time in the phone call, it's not the first thing out of my mouth because it's kind of like, whoa, abrasive. But I've, I've been chatting with them, I've been getting their story. I'm one of the rare people that will even listen to them and get their full story of why are they moving, and there's a lot of important things that happen in that phone call and I tell them that and if they're like why I'm like oh you know because I work with different investors and people have these impressions of Detroit and I am determined to change that which I am it's true that not everybody in Detroit has like a pit bull ring or they don't do cockfighting in their backyard and they're not all destroying their houses and I can tell ma'am just talk about well, ever say ma'am I can tell just talking to you, you're not the type. So I'm sure you won't mind. It's actually kind of fun. I'm just going to come over and just check it out. I'm not going to go with a white glove and make sure you dust and don't even worry about picking up for me because I know for my sake, I'm actually kind of a bit of a cluttery person, which is true. Um, so it's not like I'm looking at that. I'm making sure there isn't anything that would damage the structure of the house. And that's something that I promise the owners, you're okay with that, right? And they're like, oh yeah well the people that aren't okay with it either argue with me right then and there and they're like that's above and beyond and that's rude and you have no right and who do you think you are and i'm like thank you very much goodbye <laughs> and then the people that are more polite right off the bat are just like oh okay and then somehow they tend to disappear and it comes time for the home visit and they're nowhere to be found and they do not want me at their house and when i have gone to do the home visit this is what i do get a picture of the outside of the house what i'm looking for on the outside how bad is the grass or in michigan the snow um, and then i'm looking to see vehicles are there a bunch of dead vehicles in the driveway because that can be a problem with the city and then what I'm especially looking for are the pets. Does it look like there's a dog in the backyard? And I really scope that out and I kind of take my time getting out of the car. And then I go in and I check it out. And 
one thing I try to see, I don't like go, okay, I'm going room to room to look in every room. And I tell them, you know, it's okay. You can like, yeah, there's always somebody sleeping <laughs> when I go. Cause I usually go in the morning anyway, like around 10 or something. Um, it's a quiet time in Detroit. And um, I want to make sure that their stove isn't so darn caked with grease that it could have a fire, you know? And when I first started, I could not believe this one tenant had clearly smoked pot right before I got there. And this was in 2010 and it was before it was legal. And I just thought that was the most appalling thing. And I complained about it to my husband and he's like, but everything else was really great about her, right? I mean, are we ones to judge if she's smoking marijuana? And I'm like, oh, I guess not. Do you know she stayed like eight years in my house? She was a fantastic tenant. And I personally wouldn't smoke pot right before somebody came over. Well, I don't smoke pot. <laughs> So she did and she turned out to be a great tenant and I just used my own judgment. I always try to check out the bathroom. I've been in bathrooms before where the sink is totally clogged. And a lot of times people move, they want to move because they're dealing with slumlord situations and they're very excited to show me. So they'll take me down to the basement and they'll show me how it's all backed up and this landlord will not fix it or they'll show me the sink in the bathroom that's clogged up that has never been drained before. The one time I did deny somebody from a home visit only once you guys only once my tenants are great if I make it to the home visit part they are darn good tenants but one time I did deny this woman I had told her at this point that it was okay to have a dog and this is before this is very important to know this is before I learned that a lot of insurance companies do not allow dogs that have vicious breeds I highly recommend that you join your local RIA group, Real Estate Investors Association. I'm with Real Estate Investors Association of Oakland. I teach the beginning landlord class, but I did learn this at a RIA meeting about insurance. There's all kinds of things you learn just talking to other investors and landlords. There's certain breeds that they will not insure and they're called the vicious breeds. And I'll start writing down the list here of what they consider vicious breeds. Some of them are a little surprising, but she did have a pit bull. And I said to her, well, I do want to meet your dog. So now if you do allow dogs, you do want to meet their dogs. And so she brought the dog in and I have never in my life seen such a terrified dog. That guy was scared out of its wits to come near me. And I could tell that he really was not an indoor dog. He just seemed like a nervous wreck. And another thing that kind of bothered me, I did tell her she didn't need to straighten up, but she had a pile of laundry on her couch and she told me to sit on it. And I, <laughs> I didn't know if it was clean or not. And I sat on it cause I'm polite and I'm just like, I don't think I want to rent to her. And I didn't, it was more about the dog than the laundry, which could have just been not learning good manners. I don't know, <laughs> but I did not rent to her. Um, another thing now, if you do allow dogs, when you're doing the home visit, I highly recommend you go next door and knock on their door and say, Hey, I'm thinking of running to the person next door. I just wondered, I'll never tell her you said anything. I promise. I swear. But can you tell me how it is living next to her dog? <laughs> I've done that. And I'm glad because if a dog barks its head off and I'm the next door neighbor and that woman's moving, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, that dog. Well, I guess you could lie. You could be like, the dog's a dream. Just get her out of here. But it's just one more thing you can do to ensure that you've like covered all your bases. So I do highly, highly, highly recommend the home visit. Now, friends of mine at RIA, they're like, I would never just tell them I'm coming over to do a home visit. You are so bold. <laughs> and so one of my friends, he said he always saves out a piece of paper that they need to sign. And he waits till he's like five minutes away. And he calls, he's like, hey, I'm right in your neighborhood. I have this one piece of paper. Can I pop in on you? And I see the value of that. It's less awkward for him. And the, the good part is that they didn't have time to straighten up or they didn't have time to get rid of the pit bull ring if they had one. You know, those aren't typically the people that call to rent a house and they most definitely don't have section eight. <laughs> uh, they're not the type. If you found this helpful, please remember, give me that thumbs up. I would love it if you leave a comment. Tell me about any home visit you've done or if you have any questions or if there's any other videos that I haven't covered, but check out my series of all the rest of my videos here, the section eight playlist. Check out my investing in Detroit playlist and subscribe to me and oh, there goes my face with the latest upload. Thank you so much for watching.